uh, Sheboygan Common Council Committee of the Whole Meeting to order for Thursday, September 15th, 2011. Uh, roll call, please. Belt. Here. Warren. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Here. Common. Excused. Heideman. Here. Half. Excused. Kittleson is here. Matichek. Haven't heard anything. No, okay. I'll just put no. Rinfleisch. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Van Akron. Um, I, don't, I, uh, I don't know. I haven't okay. heard anything. Vanderweel. Here. And Versi. Here. Okay. 11, 11 present. We have, a, we have a quorum. Uh, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Alderman, we are on live television again tonight. And so if you'd please put your mics on. Uh, if anybody in the audience uh, has a friend or a neighbor who is not able to attend and they want to watch this meeting rebroadcast, uh, you can call Carrie Kautzer at WSCS-TV at 459-6663, 459-6663. Mr. Kautzer is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and he would be able to provide you with the uh, schedule for the rebroadcast of this meeting. Uh, tonight, uh, last night we were able to get through one, uh, items number one through 17 on the agenda, and tonight we're going to be dealing with the rest of the agenda, but however, before we get to item number 18, I would like to offer a public forum on the agenda items that we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, if anybody in the audience would like to speak, you would have three minutes. Does anybody wish to be heard tonight before we get into the agenda? Does anybody wish to be heard? And for the third time, does anybody wish to be heard? Nobody for public forum. We'll go right into, into the agenda. Item number 18 on the agenda is discussion and possible action on the non-represented retiree insurance benefits. And that would be Mr. Rice would be handling that, our HR consultant. I was wondering if we can combine both 18 and 19. Sure. Uh, 19 is a discussion and possible action on proposed benefit changes for 2012. Proceed. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, all of you should have on your desk a uh, 11 by 14 sheet or 8.5 by 17, whatever it is, uh, that outlines the benefits. Let me take a couple minutes and walk through uh, what you have here. What we did was to take and uh, take a look at what the non-represented group has now uh, and what the three unions that are going to have to decide on recertification or what have you at the end of this year have and then what's proposed for 1-1 one, one of 12, so that you have a, a comparison of what it currently is and what we're proposing for the future. Uh, at the top is Wisconsin requir requirement, and I'll just go through the proposed. Uh, union employees will match the non-reps and pay 50% of the total as of 1-1-2012. One, one, um, health insurance. Employees will pay 12% of the monthly premium. Currently, they pay either eight or 10, depending upon which uh, organization they're in. Would pay 12% of the monthly premium if they elect to participate in the health risk assessment and biometric program. We're introducing this in October. Uh, basically, what it amounts to is the health risk assessment is a as an online. Uh, uh, document that you complete talking about lifestyle, uh, exercise, those kinds of things that you do in your personal life. And the biometric uh, is a blood draw that would take and uh, look at your A1C, would take a look at cholesterol, 
uh, all of those kinds of things. This is purely a, uh, an assessment that is between you and UMR, our healthcare provider. None of the results, individual results, would go to the city. Uh, the employee would receive back a report on the HRA and the biometric feedback that they took, potential for disease or potential for other life challenging illnesses going forward in the future, and some suggestions in terms of what they could do to uh, correct the problems or the deficiencies in their, in their behavior. Uh, if they choose not to participate in that, then the uh, monthly premium would be 15%. Um, number two, spouses who are eligible for other insurance through their employer uh, are, would be required to pay an additional $50 per month in premium to participate in the city plan. The reason for this is we simply want people, if you have a spouse who is eligible for insurance uh, coverage under their employer, to take that insurance coverage. So if they choose not to, then there's going to be a $50 additional cost to them. Uh, we're going to institute office co-pays. Uh, employee would pay $30 for an office visit to a family practice MD. Uh, the copay would be waived, however, if the employee chooses to go to the county clinic. And we're entering into an agreement with the clinic. Uh, and there would be a $50 copay for office visits to specialists. And those office uh, copays do not go against the deductible. Part time employees will pay 50% of their insurance premium as of 1 1 12. Currently, part time employees pay nothing toward their insurance. Tom, I, uh, do you want to wait for questions until the end? I've got oh. Alderman that flashed in already. Well, or would you rather wait till the end, or no. would you want to take a question on what you've done so far? I, I don't care. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's just something to quick point out. I did get some, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did get some phone calls about this. With the biometrics, mm -hmm. clarify. For them, I know it does, but it does not. Any any of the results from that does not go into their medical records, correct? No, that was there a concern. Are, none I, I knew of those, that, but they wanted to hear it from you. None of those records are kept in the city at all. Those are kept with UMR. Uh, again, I don't care to know any of that information. All we get is a summary report of the people who participate in the test, saying, "Hey, you've got employees who have these issues and so forth." And this is part of a long-term plan that we're going to be doing in the health and wellness going forward. People who have or are subject to chronic diseases, for example, I have diabetes, and they would, they would provide a coach later on, next year or the year after, to work with that employee for his or her benefit, not necessarily for the city's, but ultimately, yes, would we benefit if we don't have those kind of diseases? Certainly. So that's the purpose behind it. Alder President Kittleson. Thank you. Uh, Tom. It, it, but we're not suggesting here. I mean, we know the employee pays the $30 copay for an office visit, but that will be waived if they go to the county clinic. However, if a person still wants to continue with their own doctor that, that they've been with, they don't necessarily, you know, they, they can choose to do that, correct? Certainly. We're not suggesting that they have to give up their doctor. Not at all. To do this. Okay. Not at all. Thank you. Anything else? The health risk assessment, uh, excuse me, the health reimbursement account is next on your list. Uh, the city would uh, continue to take and fund 50% of the deductible for 2012 as we did in 2011, except uh, employees rather than having $500 that they would be responsible for on, on their deductible, they would be responsible for 50% of it. Or in the case of single, it would be from 500 to 750. In the case of family, from 1,000 to 1,500 would be their responsibility. Uh, employees would pay the first 50% of the deductible, the city would pay the second 50%. Rollovers to end in 2011, uh, in, currently in 2011, if you don't spend all of your health reimbursement account, it rolls, rolls over into the next year those rollovers would end at the end of this year. Employees would have 12 months to use any rollover money for medical expenses. So at the end of 2012, the whole health reimbursement account program goes away. 
Alderman Belt. Thank you. Um, have you have you talked uh, and, or thought about HSA accounts? Uh, we looked at HSA accounts two years ago and uh, decided that the health reimbursement count was as good as or better, and that's what we chose to do. It. We could take another look at HSAs. Well, the reason I ask is because an HSA account is that, that employees, that person's money that they're putting into this account, and it doesn't disappear at the end of the year. That rolls over continually, mm -hmm. and then they can put whatever mo money they want into that account, but I think there's other regulations that uh, dictate whether you can have the HSA account or not, mm -hmm. but I'm, and I'm not familiar with them, but I'm just curious whether you looked into that at all. We did. Um, let me share with you the, the long-term plan. Uh, what we anticipate doing going forward in 2013 is getting ourselves to the point where we have what's called a full flex cafeteria plan for benefits, which means that the city would agree to pay X number of dollars, whatever that, that sum is, and then the employee has a menu of choices that they can make on various benefits. The health uh, savings account may be one of those in 2013. But they would have two or three options of medical, they'd have two or three options of, of other things as we'll talk a little bit later on about short and long-term disability and what have you. So that's where we see ourselves ultimately ending up. This is kind of a, uh, a approach to getting us there in 2012. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Belt. Okay, um, life insurance. Currently, the city pays the first month, or the employee pays the first month, and the city pays the last 11 months. Going forward in uh, 2012, the employee will pay 50%, and the city will pay 50%. Um, Long-term disability and short-term disability. Uh, let me skip that for just a minute and go down to the PTO program. And I draw your attention to the last page that you have, which kind of is a summary of the paid time off. Let me walk through this with you, and then I'll go back and touch on a couple of the other things on page one. Uh, paid time off is a fairly common program in many businesses and industry today. And it basically says paid time off includes vacation time, holiday pay, uh, personal days, sick days, bereavement, all of those kinds of things rolled into one package. So what we are proposing for 2012, employees with zero to one year of service would have a total of 120 PTO hours to use. There would be zero vacation hours because they worked the first year to earn vacation for the second year. Holiday would be 80 hours because we recognize 10 regular holidays. And there would be 40 hours of discretionary, which could be used for sick days, could be used as a personal day for bereavement, for whatever the employee chooses to use it for. Years one to four, 240 hours. 80 hours of vacation, 80 hours of holiday, and 80 hours of discretionary. Five to 12 years, 280 hours, 120 hours of vacation, 80 hours of holiday, and 80 hours of discretionary. Years 13 to 20, 320 hours, 160 hours of vacation, 80 and 80. And finally, 21 plus years would be 360 hours total, 200 hours of vacation, 80 hours of holiday, and 80 hours of discretionary. If you go back to page one, what we're doing then is we're taking and eliminating the sick leave or sick day program that we currently have in most of our areas. Holidays are taken care of. We're eliminating the floating holidays. We're standardizing on 10 throughout. Bereavement pay per se is eliminated. It's included in the PTO program. And personal days are included in the PTO program. So we've tried to incorporate all of that into one plan called the PTO plan. If we eliminate the sick days, <clears throat> we wanted to provide the opportunity for employees to purchase short-term disability insurance and long-term disability insurance. 
Short-term disability insurance would be designed to cover the employee uh, on the ninth day of illness or the ninth day of accident for a total of 26 weeks. The employee would receive 66 and two thirds percent of their base pay. They would pay for the insurance because it's voluntary, which would mean that the benefit that they have would be non-taxable. If they chose to take and purchase the long-term disability plan, the long-term disability plan would begin on week 27 and continue to age 65. Again, at the same benefit level of 66 and two thirds percent of their base pay. Again, they would pay for it so it would not be a taxable benefit when they receive the money. Uh, Tom, how much, uh, do you know what the premiums are gonna be on those yet? Uh, we have the uh, premium for the uh, short-term disability it's based upon pay. I looked at it, uh, a $50,000 base pay would be about $7 a month, something like that. Thank I'm you. still waiting for the LTD ones, but they're gonna be approximately the same or a little bit less than that. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to page two. Uh, there will be no vacation carryover. However, uh, an exception can be made by a department head if there are extenuating circumstances. And our goal would be, if that indeed does happen, to limit that to five days at the most. Some of our organizations have the opportunity to purchase vacation. We would eliminate that going forward. Overtime pay would be standardized throughout uh, most of the city with the exception of police and fire and transit at uh, overtime pay over 40 hours per week at time and a half. Workers' compensation start at beginning uh, January 1st would be 66 and two thirds percent of base pay, which is the recognized standard throughout most of business and industry. As you can see, ours have 80% uh, of base pay. The dental insurance plan going forward has not changed from what it currently is or will not change. And the vision insurance plan will not change. Uh, Tom, uh, getting back to uh, that, uh, that health clinic, I think the other night at Selbury and Grievances, you mentioned something about chiropractic. Do you want to explain that to the alderman, how that's going to work? Uh, the Sheboygan County Clinic uh, has uh, sent us a proposal that they would uh, be willing to enter into a, a joint venture with us. Uh, they currently contract with Intera, who provides the services through the Sheboygan County Clinic um, for a fee of $50 per visit for a routine, what we would call office visit, and $45 for a chiropractic visit. Currently, they do not have a chiropractor, but they are in the process of recruiting and hiring one. So by January or so of next year, they should have chiropractic services available. In talking to uh, Mike Collard, who is the HR director for the county, uh, he indicated that they were able to save approximately 21 to 25 percent of their medical costs through the, the clinic last year. So obviously the costs are going to be less. Um, the clinic is designed to provide services of, of a routine nature, flu shots, vaccinations, those kinds of things, uh, well baby visits, the, the kind of things that you would normally go to the doctor for there, you know, if it's going to be something very serious, the nurse practitioner there would refer you to your physician, and obviously if there was a specialist, you'd go to that person as well. So the feedback that we've received from not only um, uh, Mike and some of the people in the county, but also from one of our own older persons is the fact that uh, the clinic is working well. So. Is that correct, Mr. Reeser? That's correct. Thank you, sir. Any other questions on the clinic? Thank you. 
Okay. Unused sick leave and good attendance. Um, currently, in various contracts and, and programs, uh, when an employee gets ready to retire, there, if you qualified for an attendance, good attendance program bonus years ago, which stopped, you have so many hours that you've got banked for that. Uh, unused sick leave, you've got so many hours that you have banked for that. Uh, all of those accumulate, and that is a pot that's used to, uh, to pay out, or it, it is a payout at the end of your working life. And some of those have amounted to somewhere in the neighborhood of fifteen, seventeen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000. Uh, rather than paying that out in cash going forward, uh, the vet, they're not, employees are not losing the value of that money. They're going to be simply uh, using it to pay the medical premium for their retiree insurance. So that is a change there. Any questions on that? Yes. President Kittleson. Thank you. Thank you Chair. So this program ends in 2011. Mm -hmm. What you're saying, there'll be no cash payout. The value of the good attendance bonus and sick day accrual may be used to pay for medical insurance premiums after the employee retires. I guess what I'm asking is then what, if that program ends, then what happens, are there some employees that um, are in the, you know, sort of maybe, you know, four, five, three years away from retirement, how, how, how is that going to affect them? Well, you may recall that when I presented this to salaries and grievance, mm -hmm. we made a commitment or uh, I made a commitment to our employees that we would hopefully have all of this finalized by October 1st, October 15th at the absolute latest, to provide them with enough time to make decisions regarding retirement and those kinds of things going forward. Um, so employees have a choice in terms of whether they want to take the program as it exists today, which results in a cash payout upon retirement, and leave the city, or to continue, because they're not going to be losing any money out of this necessarily. It's just going to be used to pay for medical premiums. So they will be, they're not going to lose that. They, they will be able to use it for pay medical premiums. For medical premiums. Right, when they retire. We've got Alderman Reisler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Um, we did have previous discussion regarding this uh, and looking at the possibility of um, giving a percentage payout of this to the employees that choose not to use our health insurance. Um, I think it's important that we understand, uh, and no offense to any of the employees, but the ultimate goal would be to get our retirees off of our insurance plan. That's where the money is actually accruing, not necessarily um, trying to keep them in our program uh, by allowing them to use all of their cash at the end uh, for the retirement. An example, I'm a city employee, uh, I retire, I have, let's just say $10,000 in this account, and my wife has insurance that I um, could get onto. Well, instead of getting onto that insurance and losing the whole $10,000 that's in there, I feel the wise move is I'm gonna stay on the insurance and take a single plan, I have my wife take a single plan and use the money up. It's basically free money. Instead, how about we give the employee the benefit of a percentage, 50% or whatever we come up with after a while, to pay them out uh, to then to get them off of our insurance plan onto their wives or spouses or a new plan that they can get for cheaper and thus save the, the city a lot of money in the long run with the insurance. Because obviously I believe you'll agree our retiree insurance is probably one of the highest uh, benefits that we have that we're paying. Absolutely. A couple of comments on that if I may. Number one, uh, the as we break down our employees in terms of claim costs, the, the retirees in the age group 53 to 64 account for over a million dollars of our claims, which is over 20% of the total claims cost for the city. Uh, you need to understand that under the current program, if a person who retires from the city chooses not to participate in the insurance program with the city, they cannot come back and get it later on. They're done. So that would be a drawback to what you're proposing. Uh, the average payout, and I took a look at some of them today, 
uh, for uh, an employee who leaves the city under this program would be somewhere between $6,000 and $23,000, $25,000. And it depends upon how much they had in their good attendance bonus and how many sick days they've been able to accrue. So it is substantial. Uh, Tom, do you, uh, when, a, when a, an employee retires, is it part of their exit interview or whatever you do when they retire, is there any coaching done on what's available out there with private insurance like uh, Medicare Advantage plans or stuff like that versus what the, uh, what the insurance would cost them if they stay with the city uh, or are they pretty much on their own to make those decisions? Uh, two years ago when we were with Humana, I asked them if they could provide us with a group insurance plan for people over age 50 who retired. The answer was no. Uh, when we went with UMR, I asked the same question and got the same answer, no. You can, there are no group programs that will provide for retirees <coughs> like that, so they have to come into ours. The options available to retirees are if you are in very, very good health, you know, you might want to take and go out and purchase a high deductible plan to protect yourself and assume the risk that you're going to go for the next eight, nine years, whatever it is, till age 65 without any major problems. But that's why most of the people choose to continue on our insurance because, number one, it's an outstanding program. It is expensive for them, but, you know, it assures them that they have the coverage in case anything catastrophic happens. I, and I understand and I know from personal knowledge that the market for somebody well, when I retired, I was 58 or 59, and uh, the market out there for a gap policy between, you know, middle late 50s up until 65 is very expensive on the open market. Right. I was just shocked at what it was. So I was I was happy when I could qualify for Medicare because of my disability, and I could get on one of those Advantage plans that saved me over 500 bucks a month. But in that interim period before you're eligible for Medicare, the premiums are just astronomical on the open market. This year, uh, in 2000, late 2010, we did make available to uh, our employees over age 65 a supplement plan, which um, I think probably two thirds of them chose, which saved them on the average between three and $400 a month. Alderman <clears throat> Riesler? Yeah, apparently the gremlins have moved down to my uh, uh, I, I guess I just want to take a, a, a second and uh, explain again um, the unused sick leave and just maybe clarify Mr. Rice can and help me out with this and explain. When we look at the, the amount of money that you talked about between six and $23,000 um, for these employees, you have to look at exactly what this is. It's unused sick time that's actually good, um, uh, a good program for good attendance. Now, they're getting paid out some of these $38 um, dollars per day and some of them 60 where the average sick day or day of work is probably worth a good 160 to 240 dollars. So they're actually saving the city by not using these days on their sick leave account and it's accruing at a lower portion, maybe a quarter of a percent towards the end payout, which we're looking at eliminating here. So that's where the sick day, someone that started here 30 years ago, and was a good employee, as it says, good attendance, and didn't use sick days, the 12 he's allowed a year and they, and they increase, um, basically gets this as a good attendance at the end. Other areas um, and jurisdictions have where the whole thing is accrued and paid out the whole amount based on the hours, eight hours per day, based on your hourly rate, rate when you retire. So, I mean, this actually was a savings for the city when they were not using the sick days. If everybody had used all 12 of their sick days each year, we would have been accruing a much larger bill throughout this employee's 30 years than what we're looking at here. Just a matter of clarification. So we don't look at the money and go, oh my God, this is just a terrible amount. Now, Mr. Riesler, let me, let me suggest to you that the people who didn't use it were paid for eight hours. Mm -hmm. So they, the, the city paid the eight hours of pay, plus we accrued the eight hours of pay for the sick leave that now we're gonna pay out when they retire. But so, they were here, so we didn't have to have somebody else come in and fill their position that's true. as well, another eight hours. That's true. I just wanted to clarify that, because not the shocking factor of, my God, this is a lot of money, each employee. It's actually what they had earned by not being sick and that's right. being dedicated to the city. Thank you, Alderman Riesler. 
Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Tom, what's the number of people that actually we're worried about right now paying out? Do you have a number on that qualify for this plan that we would potentially pay out? It would be the number of people who are eligible for a retirement benefit under WRS. Uh, we've had people, probably 41 to 45 people who have requested the, the numbers for retirement this year. 11 have definitely said, yes, we're going to retire. There's another 20 to 25 that could potentially retire. But every employee will receive this benefit at the end for the time they have currently in. The benefit will be frozen at the end of right. this year. There will be no more accrual of the benefit. It'll be locked in at the rate of pay that was on, on in December. And that's what will be the benefit going forward. Other person, Kittleson? Go ahead, ladies first. But then I, I just want to under, but what about the people who are, you know, fall into the, that area um, that, you know, they have a, some time to go yet uh, in, the, in the city working and they came into their job expect, you know, w w working that into their retirement plan, um, knowing that that was going to be how it was going to be at the end for them. And now that is no longer. How many well, people fall into that? Working category? what into their retirement plan? Working that either that the, that good attendance, the cash payout, the cash payout. They were not going to be able to have it. They'll it'll be used to pay the insurance premiums, which they have to pay anyway if they're going to be on the on a city's insurance plan. I mean, you're going to pay it one way or the other. You know, if you're 55, 53 right. years of age and you're going to retire, if you get let's say it's $17,000, mm -hmm. you're going to pay $1,700 a month going forward for insurance, for the city insurance. That's what the family plan costs on a monthly basis. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just so I can clarify, this is only for if they choose to go with the city insurance plan, that they would get that. They accrued so many dollars Instead of getting that payout, if they, if they, they won't have an option at that point. When they retire, they're only going to have the option of... Well, you theoretically have an option, yes, because you could choose to not continue on the city plan and go out and purchase your own insurance plan. But at the age of 53, 55, 58, 60, uh, you're not going to find a group plan that you'll be able to enroll in. So you're going to have to buy your own individualized insurance which as Alderman Bourne already mentioned, it tends to be extremely expensive. Well, sure, sure, I understand that, but, but they still get that money, so can they apply that they accrued don't. money they, they don't to an anything. outside plan? No. Oh, so they lose they get it. nothing. So at that point, they, they would just flat out their whole career, but now you're just saying take it away and you get nothing. Going forward, they would lose that if they Unless chose. Unless they went with the city. That's correct. Okay. Again, back to my point, forcing them to stay with the city, we're, no offense, we don't want them. Okay. Because they're accruing 20% of what our payouts are. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So actually going back to what Alderman Reisler said is if we did change this into a 50% payout, we actually get them off the insurance sooner because that in, even if they do stay on the insurance, they have half the amount of money to pay for it, gets them to go off sooner. The only way that that would make sense is if, they, if we paid out the 50% with the understanding that they would not be on the city's insurance anymore. You know, the long-term goal, and, I, and I'm sure Mr. Amodio is going to address this later on, is we have huge long-term costs that the city has to bear as you take and look at all of the retiree benefits that we have to pay going forward. They're absolutely huge in the millions of dollars. And so what we're trying to do now is take some steps so we can begin to curb some of those long-term costs for the city. Alderman Reisler. Thanks. And, and Tom, one of the other concerns that we do have is that, let's say we have 20 to 40 people retire at $20,000 a piece. That's going to be several hundred thousand dollars we're going to have to look at coming up with in 2012 to cover this from the 2011 budget that we didn't have ready, correct? Well, if they retire, they're going to have to retire before the end of this year. Right. If so those it's going to be dollars if, that right. this year. If 20 to 40 of them retire, we need that money this year to put in their bank to pay out for insurance claims that obviously I don't think we have budgeted for. So that was another concern. Thank you, Alderman Reisler. Alderman Kittleson. Tom, have all the employees had, or the nine reps had a chance to look at this plan and have it explained to them? I had a meeting uh, this afternoon and one yesterday and explained this to those that chose to attend. 
So there are some who, do, who have not seen the plan yet? They didn't attend. They haven't seen it. Okay. President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you. Um, it, it sounds harsh when we look at uh, past practices versus uh, the proposed practices. Um, but I think you know, also not, we're not comparing just those two things, past and, and proposed. We're also comparing private versus public sector. Mm -hmm. And just to give an example, you know, um, if I retire from my current employer, I have no insurance when I retire. I have to buy all my insurance if I retire early before 60, well, for me, it would be 67, I think, before I can retire, my particular age, uh, age cohort. Um, and my retirement is whatever I put in my 401k matched by that up to 50 cents on the dollar for my employer. You know, that's the reality of what's out there right now. So this, this sounds absolutely harsh, but there's still benefits here that the average worker is not going to get in, in the private sector right now. So I want people to understand that as well, that, that, that it's not cutting everybody off at the knees, in my impression. Uh, it is balancing it more with the private sector's doing, and it's still a better plan than what I have in my current employer. You're absolutely Thanks correct. I, if I might comment on that for just a minute. When I first came into the city and I began to look at the benefit programs and so forth, quite frankly, I, I couldn't believe what I was reading because all of my business experience has been in the private sector. When a municipal employee or a state employee under the WRS system retires, the average payout for those people is somewhere between 70 and 80% of their normal take home pay for the rest of their life. I don't know of anyone in the private sector that has guaranteed payments of 70 to 80% in their retirement. So that's a perspective you need to consider as we took a look at the, at the whole package and what the private sector, who comprise most of the taxpayers that pay the taxes, that pay our salaries, live with. So yes, Alderman Riffleish, that was a consideration as well. Did you have something, Alderman Riffleish? I do, just one comment to you, Alderman. This is basically kind of like taking in when the company comes back and says, oh, by the way, you're not going to get the 50 cents on the dollar now. You're not going to get your IRA paid out because we can't. I mean, this is what you're doing to these employees that have basically used this benefit for 20 to 30 years of dedicated service to the city and not using the sick days to now coming back and saying, thank you for all your good work, but get out and we're keeping your money. It, it, it's, it's similar to that. That happened. That happens all the time, too. I understand. I guess I'm just saying, happen. my opinion is, I don't think that it's, that's the right thing to do. Right. Well, <laughs> with all due respect to Alderman Raisler, that's the real world out there. I mean, there's tons of companies that... Uh, with all due respect, it's actually not the real world, because these employees signed on for this job, were recruited into these positions, knowing what the benefits were. And that's what the public sector benefits were. Now, I understand they're different from private, but the private employee also had the opportunity to become a public employee. Well, but the point, uh, with all due respect, it also comes to the point where we can't afford it anymore. I we can't, we can't, we can't go on like this. But I don't think we can take everything all done at one time. Well, That's my... Right. Thank you. Uh, President Rinfleisch. Thank you. Um, my grandmother was an employee of Sears, retired from Sears, had promises from Sears in retirement, and those were taken away after retirement. Um, it, it has happened, um, and for her, she already made plans in retirement. It's not as if she was changed before she retired. Uh, I have worked at employers who, when I did sign on, had fantastic medical plans. Um, I had the opportunity to work for them. I worked for them, fantastic. That changed. The plans changed. It does happen all the time. I'm not pleased when it happened to me. Um, but as for working in the public sector, uh, for the last six, seven years, I've been a, a beer salesman. I don't know anywhere in this state that I can do it in the, in the public sector. So I disagree. I've done the best as I can. I have a great employer that I'm convinced with, but uh, I'm very satisfied with what they are. I think it's a very good medical plan compared to what I've had in the past. But when I retire, if I retire before my Social Security age and, and Medicare age, I'm paying 100% of my premiums, and I'm paying basically 100% of my retirement plan. Uh, when my employers contribute, they do so. Uh, usually 50 cents on the dollar up to 3% or 6%. That's it. That's standard out there. Um, and it's harsh. I'm not up here to say we have to, you know, try our best to make employees feel bad. Absolutely not. But 
when the employees call me and ask me why are we doing this, it's because of all the other phone calls I'm getting of people saying I can't afford all of this because I don't get it myself in, in the private sector anymore. Uh, and that's where I have to, to look. That's where I have to weigh. You know, do we take this step now? And if not now, when? Uh, I see no reason not to take it now uh, and uh, help, our, help our citizens and our taxpayers who may not even have benefits as good as mine. There's plenty of working people out there without insurance. Um, what do you tell them? We don't take the step right now. So uh, I, I, I also have not seen anything from WRS on down that uh, is less than what I have at this point in time. Uh, and that includes uh, long-term, short-term, uh, paid time off, insurance, um, workers' comp at 66 and two-thirds versus the higher percentage. Uh, that's all standard. That's all stuff that I have. Um, so I, I, I welcome these changes. I think it's, it's time. Uh, and it will definitely save the, the taxpayers appropriate list. And I feel horrible that the employees have, who have made plans are seeing these changes right now. But unfortunately, you know, there's plenty of promises in the, pri in the, public, in the private sector that have been broken as well lately. Uh, and uh, those people who have the promises broken to them are the ones that are paying for these benefits right now. Uh, Alderman Sampson's first. Thank you, Alder uh, President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this may sound kind of funny sometimes coming from me because sometimes I even surprise myself. But as much as I don't agree with a lot of the contracts and everything that was agreed to up to this point, I am strongly against a lot of the things that have taken place over years and years and years and years. But they were still agreed upon. Under what situation doesn't matter at this point. They're still agreed upon. As much as it's happening in the private sector as it does the public sector that, well, if you, you know, you're, you're guaranteed or you're promised or you have a contract that says you get this on this day and then you get to that day and that company, whether it's public or private, takes it away, that doesn't make it right, period. Uh, if, if you enter into an agreement, good or bad for one side or the other, that agreement should be honored. Um, I'm not for a lot of the things that were agreed upon, but they were agreed upon. So if, that, if that's one of those things where in my contract it says, as I'm working here 10, 15, 20 years later, that you're going to be able to accrue X number of dollars and I choose to work my schedule around that and I don't use the sick time or I don't use those, uh, the time, I don't take the time off because I'm anticipating getting a payout at some point down the road or at least a portion of that benefit, and then all of a sudden I get to that point and you say I'm going to take it away. That just doesn't, that, that to me just doesn't sound right when there's an agreement already in place and you start taking that away. So um, I agree that a lot of the things that have happened over time weren't very pleasant and they're probably dead wrong. But it did happen. It's in place. We got to deal with it um, and then make different agreements, better agreements from this point forward. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Uh, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, President Reinflisch, I'm, I'm sorry that your mom did not get her promise of retirement. <clears throat> I don't think that Sears had quite as much money invested in her through the training of, of 20 to 25 years for some of these employees. And again, I'm not going to pick on anyone in particular, but I will. The fire chief sitting in the back with his thousands and maybe tens of thousands of dollars invested in him as our fire chief that we've invested in these employees that we are doing a disservice to the city by losing them, by me coming to, and I apologize, Fire Chief, but coming to you and saying, Chief, decide by October 15th if you want to stay or you want to reap the benefit and, and, and take this money payout. I think we owe it to these employees with their vast experience and the money we don't have to pay now to spread this out over a period of time and say, let's take this position here and, and let's, okay, let's go WRS. It's gone, great. Let's go with the, um, the next step. It's gone, it's great. The next step, let's do it over a period of five years. Why rush, apologize again, Chief, the Chief to get out when we don't necessarily want him to get out. We want him to stay and use his knowledge as long as we can because we paid a lot of money for him. We paid a ton of money for the training you have. And I'm not going to ask you how much, but I know it's thousands and thousands because I know what we stick in our employees. The same as the police, the same with DPW, the same with any of these workers here. We have stuck so much money into these people that we're now just basically saying, here's a, here's a month, make a decision, get out. Or stay and, and, and lose these privileges that you have, that you signed on for 
and that you did. So I, I agree with you all Mr. Hansen. We made a commitment to these employees. We need to follow through. We can wean some of this stuff out over a period of time, but we're, we're basically jumping into the pool too fast. Thank you, Alderman Riesler. Uh, let me continue as we go through the list until we finish. On page three, the retirement bonus. Retirement bonus uh, is in our labor contracts. It is not something that the non-represented employees get. Basically what it amounts to is a dollar bonus per month times the number of months between the, the month they retire and they turn age 65. So in some cases, if you take 120 months times $58.14, and figure it out yourself. You know, it's lots of money. We are eliminating that as of 1-1. One, one. Proposing that. The post-employment health plan. That's really number seven or 18, I think, Jim, or 17, whatever it was. Anyway, currently the non-represented employees have a, have a program that says uh, if you have uh, served as a uh, non-represented employee, when you retire, if you are an exempt employee, exempt from overtime, you can have insurance coverage with the city for up to 10 years or until age 65. The premium, if you, if you take single coverage, is paid for 100% by the city. If you take family coverage, 60% of the premium is paid for by the city. If you're a non-represented employee, you can retire five years and have 100% of single coverage and 50% of, or 60% of family coverage paid. We took a look at this program and we said, we need to take and make some changes to it. Because again, it's very expensive and not really affordable going forward. So we've taken and broken the group down into three tiers or classes. Class one are all of the current non-represented employees in the plan who meet the uh, retirement eligibility um, benefit for WRS. What this means is all of our employees currently who have 15 years of service with the city, five as a non-represented employee, and are 55 years of age and over or in the case of police or fire, 50 years of age, would be grandfathered and covered in the, we have the same plan coverage uh, that they have today going forward. I think that's a group of about 14 or 15 people if I recall correctly. For everyone else that is uh, currently covered under the non-represented employee retiree insurance program, they would be in tier two or class two. Uh, all employees in class two will be grandfathered in the plan, however, their benefit will be exempt employees rather than 10 years, it would be five years. Non-exempt non employees rather than five years, it would be two and a half years, and the employee would pay 50% of the premium going forward. We would have a third tier of employees, which would be all new employees hired who are non-represented uh, or new, uh, new employees going in as represented employees as of January 1st, will be eligible for 18 months of COBRA coverage upon a retirement. They would pay 100% of the single or family premium for the coverage. So everyone who is currently in the non-represented plan would be either in tier one or tier two. Any new employees hired or new employees becoming non-represented would be falling into tier three. Any questions?
Alderman Bill. The people with less than five years would fall into that class two. Um, some of these people have taken on, moved from the uh, uh, union position into the management position. Mm -hmm. And when they signed on, they, I'm not going to say they're guaranteed, they were guaranteed this, but they signed on into the management position with the understanding that uh, this benefit was going to be there when they got to retirement age. Now we're going to reduce that for them. Mm -hmm. That's what we're proposing. Okay. I guess I don't quite agree with that, but. Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, this was not an easy decision to make. This wasn't the kind of opportunity you look for and say, how can we do something like this? When you take a look at the financial cost of the benefit plans that our employees have enjoyed for years, it's huge. When I came into the city in 2009, the 85% of the general fund was spent on wages and benefits. 85% of our general fund. Over the last two years, it's gone down a little bit. When you take a look at the long-term costs of these programs, it's virtually unsustainable. And I think if you were to take a look at other municipalities and state governments, it's unsustainable. The state of Illinois is bankrupt and their retirement plan is no funding whatsoever. Our reserves are enough to cover the WRS. So, you know, I don't know when it would be a good time to do these kinds of things. If we could have reduced them, like uh, Alderman Riesler suggests, you know, we could do it, but the costs still remain for time coming. So there's no joy in this. When I had our meeting this afternoon, I said to our employees, I'm not expecting you to walk out of here with a smile on your face. This is not good news. But if you take a look at it in, in, in the perspective of, as uh, Alderman Reinflisch pointed out to us, our employees still have above average rates compared to manufacturing. Our employees still have above average fringe benefits and our employees still maintain below average costs for those benefits compared to the rest of the world. Uh, President Rinfleisch. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned a word uh, that caught my ears, the unsustainable. Um, when I met my wife, I was working third shift at Lear, both in the union, both working third shift. Um, there was promises made there to us, uh, being a member of the union as well, uh, benefits, hours, and so on. Um, but when that company became not unprofitable and in consolidation, uh, the head office basically looked at the various company plants and decided which one were more sustainable and which ones were unsustainable. Um, Unfortunately, the Sheboygan Lear plant became unsustainable because of the costs, and the costs were the benefits, the salaries and benefits. Um, so the benefits that I enjoyed at that time, which are still not as good as what, what uh, we have past practices here, WRS and so on, um, weren't even close to what was here, but were so expensive that, and so unsustainable that I unsustained myself out of a job. You know, my own benefits cost me my job and it closes plant down, if you will. Um, that's the definition of unsustainable. You pointed out Illinois um, is bankrupt. Um, that's what we're facing uh, down the road here is, is unsustainability of these benefits for the employees. Um, but the city just can't disappear, can't close it down and, and sell it off to the next highest bidder, um, open up a recycling plant here in the city or, or something that's going on in the Lear plant. We can't do that. Um, um, we, we just can't lay off everybody and not have any services. So we have to find ways that do make it sustainable. Uh, and I agree that, that no one's taking any joy or pleasure in this one. Um, when it comes to, again, not the word guarantee, but promises, or they, when people signed up for various, for the work itself or for management positions or so on, um, they have been told certain things. Um, they have certain expectations. But if we don't change it now, when do we? Because if we don't change it now, we're going to maintain the unsustainability down the road. And who ultimately is the employers? It's not me. 
It's not the 16 of us. It's the taxpayers at home. The taxpayers at home who don't have these benefits, who have, don't have any income in, in raises, who are unemployed at higher rates than they have been in the last 20, 30 years in the city. Um, you know, at, at, what are we at, 10% or, or, or so versus the 4% we were just a couple of years ago. Uh, that's who the employer is. That who is paying the salary and benefits. That's who's on the hook for the unsustainability of our current plan. And that's why we have to make the changes. So I completely understand anybody saying that, that it's, it's unfair. It's not right. I agree with that. It's not, it is unfair. It isn't right. But explain that to the owners of the city who pay these salary and benefits, who are on the hook to pay these benefits um, in, in, in a current situation that's unsustainable. And I have a tough time explaining to them why we, we wouldn't choose to do this now, why we wouldn't choose to at least bring this more in line with what's going on in the private sector. And again, in line does not mean equal. It's closer. It's still better than the average person does in the private sector. And uh, uh, for Alderman Riesler, it was my grandmother at Sears. Um, she spent a lot of her time invested in that, and her changes came after she retired. She had already made her plans. So I do take great offense to say that she's not as important as anybody else, because if she lived in the city, she'd be the one paying for unsustainable benefits even though her promises were broken. So, and she doesn't live in the city. She moved out upon retirement because she couldn't afford to live in the city, so. Thank you, President Rinfleisch. Uh, I, know of, I know of small business people here in Sheboygan, and I'm talking about small businesses, two employees, three employees, four employees, where the owners of those businesses, LLPs, are paying $750 a month for their medical insurance with a $10,000 deductible and co-pays. So if you, you run the quick numbers on that, they're paying $19,000 out of pocket before they collect $1 of benefits. And, and that's, that's what's happening out there. And uh, you go up, I, I challenge any of you to go up and down A Street and call on some of the small businesses and if they're willing to share it, you're gonna hear exactly the same thing. That's what's out there. And uh, I was a small businessman myself. Luckily, I was able to get coverage through, through my wife's policy at Kohler Company, but I had to pay, because of my income, maximum into Social Security every year, plus fund my own IRA SEP every year, fund my own retirement. I had none of that as a self-employed person. And I'm just telling you, some of the, you know some of the city employees go knock on some doors or if you have relatives that are that have a business if they're willing to share it with you ask them what they're paying for their medical insurance it's unbelievable can you imagine paying nineteen thousand dollars out of pocket before you get one dollar in benefits it's out there just check with the, with the small business people that's what's happening right now <coughs> any other questions for mr rice Alderman Reisler. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm going to make a motion that we uh, accept the WRS and the health insurance portion of this document and refer the rest back to the Salary and Grievance Committee to work on a long-term structured plan um, to look at addressing some of these benefits over the next five to ten years. Second. Did you get the motion? I did not. Uh, Please repeat this. To we, accept? We accept the WRS portion. WRS. And the and the health insurance. Forward the document back to Salaries and Grievance to work on a plan to sustain some changes over the next five to ten years. And what part would that be for the changes over the next five to ten years? Everything else on the document we can review. Okay. We can put things in, pull things out, and... To, to work on changes. So then if this, if this motion fails to send this back to Salary and Grievances, then the... Uh, the uh, the recommendation to the council then if, if your motion fails, Alderman Raisler, then this would be sent to the council to uh, pass the proposal as is. Is that my understanding? If someone were to make that motion, yes. Okay. Possibly. Work on the changes for the next, what did you, just repeat that again. And the changes to the rest of the document or, or future. For future. For the future changes for the next five to 10 years the next five to ten years gotcha before Thanks. we before we take the vote on that I do have all uh, president Rinfleisch did you have something that you wanted to say um, yeah I just wanted to, to say that if that motion fails I will make the motion to um, approve the entire document forward on to council the recommendation so I at this time I'll vote no on this motion 
uh, at this time. Um, for the public's sake, pay time off. Um, I just wanted people to, to sink in what uh, Mr. Rice had sunk through, what's being proposed. Um, you work for an employer in one year. Um, say my, my current employer, I had to work the entire year before I got any vacation time, which is the same thing listed here. Um, some places it's only 40 hours, one week, some place. This plan in my current employer was two, two weeks, so 80 hours. Uh, I don't get holidays off. There's five holidays there, but I'm generally working them. Under this plan in year one, you get basically two weeks of holidays, the 10 holiday pays, holiday days, 80 hours. And I have one sick day, one bereavement day, uh, one whatever day, one paid time discretionary day, five hours. This plan offers 80 hours. That is a total of six weeks in your first year that you have and pay time off after working one year here. Um, so again, for those that, that are home that are thinking that we're doing something horrible, I challenge them to find out where else you can work for one year and get six weeks of discretionary time, you know, pay time off, vacation time, and discretionary time. Um, I think this plan, while, while drastic change, is still more than fair. Uh, so I will not support the motion at this time. And I hope that the council or the committee of the whole will support me in referring this to the full council with a positive recommendation. Thank you, President Rindfleisch. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If, if I can just ask, out of all of these other benefits here, because right now I see the unused sick leave and good attendance, the retirement bonus, those two are, are those accrue on an accrual basis. So if you have so much time in, you should expect X number of dollars. Is it, am I seeing that correctly? Those two areas are on an accrual basis. So if you go 20 years with the city, right? It, no. I, I, guess, I guess my point is, if you go so long working with a company, whether it's public or private, and you go through and your original agreement that you have established says if you, was, if, if you didn't use the sick time or you accrued, whatever it is, this is what you can expect on this day that you retire. Uh, out of all of those, I see the unused sick leave and good attendances on an accrual basis. That when you retire, you, if you had six, you know, six thousand dollars worth of accrued time that you didn't use, that, that's on an accrual basis. Is the retirement bonus the same way, similar, where it's built up? The retirement bonus is the the dollar amount times the number of years or the number of months between the day you retire and the day you turn sixty-five. It's a mathematical formula, mm -hmm. and that is, amount, that is an amount that's put into an account to pay your insurance premiums. Right now? Right now. Okay. You don't have to be here more than a year to earn it, and all those kinds of things, it's there. Okay. So, so it basically accrues. So if you put some time in, I mean, it, it's a it bonus. Up. Okay. Pure and Let's simple. Thank the you. others are based upon uh, sick days that weren't taken, based upon good attendance. Right, okay. That's why we eliminated it, because it is nothing but a cash bonus, or a, a semi-cash bonus, because it's used to pay premiums. Sure, okay. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Is there any other discussion? Uh, there's no discussion. Uh, take the roll, please. Would you want to read the... Uh... Motion, again, is, is to... Uh, accept the WRS and the health insurance and forward the, the, doc, the rest of the document back to salary and grievance to work on the future, the changes, the future changes for the next five to 10 years. Uh, Chief Herman. Can I ask uh, Mr. Rice a question on the, the PPO time? Sure. Would you, I know it's hard for you to come up, so talk louder. <laughs> Thanks, because we are on live television. By, by next week, I'll be. Good. <laughs> I actually had something written on the sick leave portion also, but I won't get into that. I'm one of the people that has dragged themselves into work every day of my career pretty much um, and expected that to be there as a payout at the end, but I, I totally understand um, where the city's coming from. Um, they've treated me well my entire career. But my question on the paid time off is, has this ever been done in a municipality? Because I can see um, problems with that time. 
uh, especially in protective services, and I would think also in the DPW, I think um, a conscientious employee is going to save those 10 days until December to make sure that they <coughs> didn't get sick, somebody in their family didn't die, um, whatever else. If I, as a department head, now have to give all my staff 10 days off at the end of December, I won't have anybody there from, I think this year I looked December 13th on. And that's the question I have is if that's been addressed. I've not researched other municipalities. I did talk to Appleton. Appleton passed some changes at their council meeting last week, if I recall, and I think PTO was one of those. There are other cities that are looking at that, uh, just like we did. So I don't know in the past whether they have, but there are many cities looking at it now with the changes that are coming or taking place. Well, as, as, you, as you go through, you know, most employees have sometime during the course of the year they get sick or they may not get sick, but their wife gets sick or their kids get sick or on and on and on. Or they have a time when they have to go to a, a dentist appointment or a doctor appointment. All of those things are things that are covered under the discretionary time. You know, we don't want people to have to lie about why they're taking the day off. If they want to take their kids to the zoo, take a discretionary day. Don't call in sick. So the fact of the matter is, is that likelihood, is that, is that a likelihood? I suspect not. There may be some days left at the end of the year that haven't been taken that people would want to take, but I don't think all of them are going to save 10 days till the end of the year. So. Anything else, Chief? You know, I guess, and in the fire department, probably the police department is the same, and I would think DPW. There are, we're at 24-7, 365 days. There, we have to have somebody here. And uh, in the fire department, we only allow four people off at one time. So I, I, I don't know how we're going to address that when somebody comes to me and says, well, I'm taking my personal day off today. Um, when it's sick leave, it's legitimate. I have to let them go. But otherwise, um, you know, I, we need to know how to address this as department heads. Chief, Chief, I have a question for you. How do you cover that? There's one way. I call in overtime and that's going to cost what time and a half more money double time on a holiday exactly uh president rinfleisch town rice answer my question thank you uh any other discussion uh, is Did everybody clear what we're voting on i'm clear do i need to repeat again no no you know ready we're ready okay all call right. the roll please all right Belt. Aye. Boren? No. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond is excused. Hammond? Go on. He's excused. Sorry about it. Heideman? No. Says no. Koth is excused. Kittleson says aye. And a check is excused. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Samson? No. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. Four yeses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have four ayes, seven noes. Motion fails. Motion fails. Uh, Alderman Rinfleisch. I move to refer the document to the full common council with a positive recommendation. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to refer the document to the full common council with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch and uh, Alderman Sampson under discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I kind of want to go somewhat the same line. I don't, I don't work within a lot of these areas that, that you do, uh, Corey, but the part that gets me is, is the accrual basis. They've earned it based on the current agreement that they have that they worked under for however many years, whether that's a, gr a good agreement or not a good agreement mm -hmm. um, is beside the point, it's an agreement. And yes, I understand there's unsustainability and there's things like that, but there's things we gotta pay for. We gotta take care of this. Um, and that means making better decisions. Now we have more flexibility with negotiating now at this point forward. So we make do with what that, now we've made a lot of changes here is there a way that maybe I could 
amend that or something to at least include uh, a little more discussion with the retirement bonus and the un unused sick leave and good attendance. At least discuss those. Well, if we'd have gone back to the salaries and agreements, we right. could have discussed it however we wanted to and changed whatever we wanted. We'd have had more time to look at it and to hold it. I'm, I'm at least looking at those two main areas there is my concern. So do you want to make an amendment to the amendment that uh, President Rinfleisch made? Is that what you're saying? Well, he didn't make an amendment, though, did he? Well, he made a motion. He, mo he made a motion to send the plan that we were presented with tonight to the council with a favorable recommendation, the entire plan. And I believe we have a second on that. We had a yeah. second on that. Council members first. It's both of us. So, if you would want to make, if you would want to make uh, an amendment to that, with your concerns, we can we can we can vote on that amendment if you'd like to. Then I'd, I'd at least like to make an amendment, at least those those two areas: the unused sick leave and good attendance, and the retirement bonus. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Second. Okay, so we're going to make an amendment to. No to point of order. Uh, Sorry. President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, as maker of the motion, I find that the uh, uh, amendment uh, is not a friendly amendment, uh, so I don't accept the motion. Uh, the motion on is to, right now to, um, to pass, pass it through with a favorable recommendation. They can vote that down and do a different motion, uh, but also it's all only a recommendation coming from this, from this committee. There is time between now and when it comes back in front of the council to amend it in front of the council as well. Um, Again, we're just making a recommendation at this point in time. It's not a done deal today in any case. Um, but if, if more changes need to be made, they can do so uh, after we take the, this vote on this one. But uh, I don't see it as a friendly amendment at, to my motion. Okay. Uh, I won't accept, the, won't accept the motion because it's not a friendly amendment. So uh, is there any discussion on the original motion? By Alderman Rinfleisch. President Rinfleisch has sent this back with a positive recommendation. Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, so right now, my initial amendment request was denied? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So can I now make a friendly amendment to this request? <laughs> right. <laughs> so then I would like to make a friendly amendment request to uh, at least go back over and continue looking at the unused sick leave and good attendance and retirement bonus. President Rinfleisch? Um, I guess as a point of order, I object. So my recommendation is to not accept that as a friendly amendment. I, I don't accept that. The second would also have to accept it. But I do not. Who is the second? Alderman Carlson. He's already choosing not to. So. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm not going to accept. I'm not going to accept the, the motion. Under discussion. Uh, My thing is. Broke. Alderman Raisler. My thing is broke. Under discussion. Uh, just to clarify, if we vote to approve this and send this portion to council, um, there will be no change in the unused sick leave. And I'll go back to my original point, and I hope we do not agree on many things, but Alderman Versi will agree with me on that. We are keeping our retirees on our sick plan for a longer period of time than we should by not trying to get them paid out in cash and to leave or having the opportunity to go on a spouse's. We are spending way, way too much money and probably more money on that than we're saving in the whole plan for what one surgery is going to cost a retired person and we're actually picking up some of the portion of the bill. So this is a very expensive vote we're about to take. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Chairman. What's the average age of a retiree in the city of Sheboygan right now? Fire department and, and police, probably 56, 55. But right now, what we're talking about doesn't apply to police or fire, correct? That's true because we're negotiating contracts. So I don't know the age of the others. So, it does, so what we're voting on does not affect police or fire, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what's, okay, what's the average age? I'm sorry. I'm 55. So 57, they retire. They're not eligible for Medicare or Medicaid, correct? So even if we pay out a percentage of that bonus, say they get $5,000, I don't see that as an incentive to leave our plan. 
considering we just got done talking about it, it's the, 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 the private. You either take the cash. The private plans you, that are available it. are way more expensive. And that $5,000, $10,000 is not going to get them very far from the age of 57 to Correct. when they're eligible for Medicaid. But if your wife has insurance that you can get on, do we have any, it's $5,000. Do we have any numbers of like the percentage of people that could possibly go to their wife's plan if that's... No, that's kind of a hard number to try to come so, up with right So at now. this point, we really don't know. But we do know that there's really no incentive to leave because they're going to be paying a lot more out of pocket for a private insurance since we don't have numbers based on um, spousal insurance. Correct? Correct. It could be for any reason. They could leave to go to a higher deductible because they're healthy but and, I, and, less, and pay less. I guess uh, me, myself personally, I, I wouldn't take a $5,000 payout. I would stay on the city insurance anyways. Um, yes. Put your question in perspective. You're talking in the police and fire department about a total of six people. One fire chief. And then I'm sorry, they can't hear you out in TV land. It's okay. It's all right. Thank you. Currently, there are one, two, six people in fire and one person in police who are non-represented employees. That's it. So, and so is what you're saying that even if they do stay in the plan, it's really not that much money because it's six or seven people? I'm saying that the effect of the plan is going to be on a lot more people than just those people in police and fire. And the answer is, you know, if, if you're going to provide them with an option, that's fine, but recognize the fact that if you're 57 years old and you have a chronic disease, there's no way you're getting off of our insurance. You could pay off from 10,000 and there's not gonna, they're not gonna leave. I, I guess that's the point I was trying to make and I, I no. didn't make it as clear as you did. What I'm saying is there, that, that small amount of payout is not an incentive to leave our insurance the, program. The cost of our insurance program commercially would be huge. Huge, it would be unaffordable for most people. Director Amorio, please step up. Thank you. Uh, just to add one more comment. Uh, right now in our current retirement plan, we have 16 non-rep people. Last year, the 16 people cost the city um, just slightly over a million dollars in health claims. It's about $62,000 a person. Um, as we continue these plans, our post-employment obligations that Tom talked about continue to grow. As those 16 people stay in and another 14 come in that could potentially retire this year, uh, now we have 30 people. That liability goes from a million one a year to 2.2 million to 3.3 and continues to grow. And as we look at that liability, liability for the city, that's what we're trying to limit by limiting retirees on the plan. That's the single biggest cost to the city. Our health insurance claims cost the general fund $7 million a year. So $7 million of the $34 million that we spend from collecting taxes goes to pay health claims. And of that $7 million for 400 people, 16 of them generate a million. That's the issue. Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Moyo. So the question I have goes back to the point of, on the unused sick leave, is it not, is it, a, in your opinion, just your opinion, is it a good idea to try and pay the people out if they'll accept it and get off of our health plan? A portion of the money, obviously. Well, yes, uh, but again, uh, we have a qualifying event when we do that. Uh, and a qualifying event means that we're really not providing insurance for a person, and they get 18 months of COBRA. So regardless of what we do, they're on our plan for 18 months. But in the event where the spouse can, can pick it up, or in the event where they can, can do something different that they don't... If they have a spouse, then right. yeah, that works. I, I mean, it, it's a huge cost savings. If, if, if even for a few of the people that retire have right. the ability to go and save. Correct. Right now, if I drew a line in the sand and said I would pay everybody the rate of pay for all of the unused sick leave in the city for every employee, at the end of last year, that number was $3 million. That's another liability, and the city pays as it goes. 
just like it pays as it goes for medical costs. <clears throat> so as we continue to let these benefits accrue, we continue to continue and continue to pay them out until we can't afford to pay anymore. One more follow-up question. Ahead. Any other question, uh, Director Moyo, I, I guess is if 30 people leave, and they're probably 30 of our senior people, we're gonna pay 30 of those people out this year instead of spreading it over some time by not forcing them to retire. That's correct, that's correct. And we don't specifically know exactly where we're gonna get that money from. You might, but we, we don't have a specific We will be item. significantly over budget. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Any other discussion? Thank you. Thanks, Director Modi. Okay, I think we're set to vote on that. Uh, an I vote would send this plan as presented back to the council with a favorable recommendation. Please call the roll. Belt. No. Corin. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. No. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson says no. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? No. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. I got everybody. <clears throat> We have six ayes, five no. Uh, motion carries. So that, that then covers items number 18 and 19 on the agenda. Next, uh, we will make a motion to go into closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851E, Wisconsin statutes, for the purpose of discussion, deliberation, or formulation of negotiation strategies relative to possible collective bargaining agreements where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Can we take Double. a five-minute break? Pardon me? Five minutes. What? Five-minute break. Minutes. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, we'll, re we'll resume at, uh, why don't we make it, we'll resume at nine o'clock. Thank you. You want the motion first or? Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, ha let's do the motion. We have the motion in a second. Move to go into closed session. Second. Yeah, second. Okay, uh, I think we can do that all in favor, right? Or do we have to yep, take a I vote on? we can say all eyes. Going, all eyes. All, all, eyes. Eyes. Aye. all in favor uh, going into closed? Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. We're in closed. Uh, and I just want to mention here that when we go into closed session, it'll just be the older persons, uh, Director Amodio and uh, Tom Rice, our human resources consultant only.